Well, hello. Just thinking about the governor saying that schools would not be in session the rest of this year. In some households, there is great rejoicing. In others, there are tears being shed. So however you look at it, it's something that's beyond your control. It's something that's out of your hands. So there's no reason for us to worry about it. I heard John Hagee say one time, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it won't get you anywhere. <laughs> I guess that's something. It won't accomplish a lot. But worry is a, a kind of a practical atheism. When you read the scriptures, you hear everything else except. In fact, Paul told the Philippians, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, when it came time for God to destroy the whole earth with the flood, Genesis 7:11 says that on that day, all of the fountains of the deep opened up and it rained for 40 more days. There was a specific moment in time that was supernatural that God caused it to happen. When you get to the New Testament, we see that Jesus is having great discourse. We call it the Sermon on the Mount. But in the middle of it, he gives this seminar on worry. He says, don't worry. These things are going to happen. He said, you can't even add one cubit to your height by worrying. You're going to be taken care of. God will see to it. So when you think about it, the whole point of it is God is able. Really able. And worry is having faith in fear. You don't have to fear the past, because if you're a Christian today, God's already forgiven all the past. You don't have to fear the present. For Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You don't have to fear all of the things that are yet to come. For the psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. You know, I didn't understand that for a while, but when I think about it now, I think, you know, death is just a shadow to us. It can't hurt you. A shadow can't hurt you. Think about it this way. What Jesus did at Calvary was enough to pay all of your uh, debt, so when you get there, you don't have to fear facing God. And that takes away a lot of the worry of our future. In fact, the Hebrew writer, when he's talking about all of this, uh, he was quoting when God said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He said, So we say in confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? So there really aren't any legitimate fears, are there? Not from sickness, for the Bible teaches us that he's our great physician. Not from poverty, because he's the one that causes us to get well. Not for fear of other people, for he says, when you walk with me, I'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. All of these promises, he says, if you just had a faith as much as a grain of mustard seed, you could say this mountain, go over and jump in the ocean, and it would. He says, I'll fear no evil. For God, the Almighty God, is with me. Hmm. Worry is like having trust in the unpleasant. Worry is being sure that disaster is coming. And again, I want to quote Hagee where he says, Worry is a polluted stream that flows through your brain and drowns out optimism and kills faith. I say yay and amen. One old man said the most... Most of the trouble I've had in life never happened. You see, this is the way we, we take it. We anticipate that somehow the promises of God are not going to come true. That's what worry does to us. It makes us anticipate that God is going to leave us, that he's not going to help us, that we are going to see his children begging bread, that there is something that's too great for him to overcome. Sometimes we worry about things about ourselves. 
We have plenty of faith in God, but we don't know if we're going to hang in there. We're going to be able to do it. Let me give you some advice today. Stop worrying about who you are not and start being happy about who you are. God made you so unique like nobody else on the planet, like nobody else that's ever lived or ever will live. You're an original. You are truly a masterpiece of God. How do you get out of that worry and get into that faith climb? a pretty tall altitude to get up on that mountain. I heard a story about an aviator who planned in the early days of flight to fly around the world, but he would do it by stopping every four hours or so in a designated landing field. While on one leg of the journey, he heard this gnawing. He knew immediately it was a rat somewhere in the cockpit of the plane. And he was afraid that it was going to eat through some wires that would be essential or Maybe some of the hydraulic hoses that would be essential for him to make a good landing. So they wondered a minute for what he's, what he's going to do. How is he going to stop? He couldn't just quit. We didn't have an autopilot in those days. He was by himself. So he figured out what he would do. He started climbing. And he kept going higher and higher in the altitude. Until eventually he didn't hear the rat anymore. Then when he came back down, landed at the next strip. As he landed, the dead rat fell out onto the cockpit floor. You see, he'd got up high enough where the rat couldn't survive. And what I want you to think about is, if you will climb in your attitude of faith high enough, the rats of your worry can die out. All of those things that we think are undermining our faith all of those things we think are causing us to, to fear, just climb higher in your thoughts, in your praise, even in your prayer. Put up some of those things, if you can see from the mountaintops of praise and the mountaintops of faith of God's promises, then the rats of fear will die out. In fact, we, get, we have the opportunity to feel the love of God when you experience the love of God, then fear will die. And victory is yours. So you can spend your time in the rocking chair if you want, and it might be something to do, but it'll get you nowhere. That's what worry will do for you. I want to challenge you to climb the heights and get a glimpse of who God really is. That just kills God bless you. Let's climb together.